Do you like forested areas full of streams and ponds, overheat easily, and enjoy cold temperatures? Well, then you're probably a moose. In which case, how'd you get on YouTube? Ah, forget it. The real question is why haven't you moved to Canada? Because it's such a big country. I don't know where to go. Well, unless you actually are a moose, you probably want to stick with 85% of all Canadians and live within 100 miles of the U.S. border. Because although Canada is the second largest country and full of beautiful, diverse landscapes, a lot of that land gets so cold that you'll end up looking like this guy if you spend five seconds outside. I guess it makes sense the Canadian pop sensation, The Weeknd, can't feel his face. But for the 93% of Canadians who love their home, the excellent education system, high quality of life, and incredible cities more than make up for it. Speaking of which, let's hit 5,000 likes for a video on the 10 best cities in Canada. But before you put on your sweater, other sweater, jacket, second jacket, hat, mittens, two pairs of pants, and enough socks to cut up your circulation and move here, or if you already live in Canada and are looking for a new home, these are all 10 Canadian provinces ranked from worst to best. Based on their economy, safety, cost of living, education, and quality of life. Number 10. Actually, we're going to start off with a quick honorable mention. The territories. Sure, they aren't provinces and only have a combined population of around 125,000. But if you're looking to rake in the cash, they have a lot of good paying jobs. Northwest Territories is actually home to the highest median household income at 154,000 Canadian dollars. And the Yukon isn't looking too shabby either at 129,000. Not to mention a 5.2% unemployment rate. But wait, 5.2% is so high compared to the U.S. Actually, Mr. Moose, Canada measures their real unemployment rate, which, by the same metrics, would have the U.S. unemployment rate at 8.8%. So 5.2 is pretty remarkable. But then again, the cost of living is also much higher here, as everything needs to be shipped long distances, and heating bills are through the roof. Truth be told, for most people, no amount of money is enough to live in the cold and desolate territories, where negative 40 is common and the population centers are thousands of kilometers apart. And if that somehow sounds appealing, keep in mind the crime rates in Nunavut and Northwest Territories are more than five times the national average. Actual number 10, Manitoba. Nearly twice as many people move out of Manitoba than in, and who can blame them? It's the second most dangerous province, has the second lowest life expectancy, the worst schools in the nation, and although it's home to the lowest unemployment rate of any province at only 5.7%, there are also very few good paying jobs, so even with a median home value of just 313 grand, Manitoba still has the third highest poverty rate at 11.5%. And if all that isn't enough of a deterrent, did I mention it's the least happy province or that it gets frigid cold? In fact, Winnipeg is the coldest major city in North America, with most winter days reaching negative 30 degrees Celsius with the wind chill. And if you thought the summers would be any better, think again. There are over 110,000 lakes in Manitoba, which means it gets incredibly humid. And you know who loves lakes and humidity? Mosquitoes. Heck, there are so many here that a town literally named itself Mosquito in Ukrainian. Now honestly, no province in Canada is a bad place to live, and Manitoba still has a really high quality of life. It's just that everything the province has to offer, another province does better. Well, except for polar bears, because Churchill is the polar bear capital of the world. <laughs> Number 9. Newfoundland and Labrador The small town lifestyle of Newfoundland and Labrador is ranked as the fourth most satisfying in Canada, despite also being home to very little sunshine and terrible weather. No, like literally, St. John's is routinely ranked as having the worst weather of any Canadian city. But speaking of St. John's, it's likely the most picturesque, charming, and unique city in the country. And it's a good thing the buildings are so bright and colorful, because they'll lift your spirits on even the stormiest day. And if they don't lift your spirits, then George Street definitely will, because it has the highest concentration of bars and pubs of any street in North America. And if that still doesn't lift your spirits, then the people definitely will, as Newfoundlanders might actually be the friendliest Canadians. And if that still doesn't lift your 
spirits, well, then you probably suffer from seasonal depression, in which case, don't move here. Because from the fog, terrain, to sheer isolation, and 322 centimeters of annual snow, Newfoundland isn't for the faint of heart. But if you don't mind having a vitamin D deficiency and are just looking for a beautiful place to raise a family, Newfoundland and Labrador is the fourth safest province, the schools are great, and while the unemployment rate is the highest in the nation at 12.1%, the median home value is also the fourth lowest at just 315 grand. Number 8. Prince Edward Island. Prince Edward Island may be the smallest province by both population and area, but what it lacks in size, it makes up for in potatoes. Yeah, while PEI is just 0.1% of Canada's total landmass, it produces 2.5 billion pounds of spuds annually, or around 25% of the country's total yield. And with only 160,000 full-time residents, humans are certainly outnumbered by the root vegetable. Well, at least until summer rolls around and all the tourists high tail it to the island to indulge in delicious seafood, explore the charming countryside, and dip their toes in the warmest ocean water north of the Carolinas. Speaking of which, fishing, tourism, and agriculture are pretty much the only industries in the province, resulting in the second highest unemployment rate at 10.6% and the second lowest median household income of only $89,000. And since many people from the more expensive big cities have been moving here for the laid-back lifestyle as they can now work remotely, home values have shot up by a staggering 33.6% over the past year to 370 grand. This has made PEI unaffordable for many locals, but can you really blame anyone for wanting to live here? I mean, it's the third safest province, offers the highest overall life satisfaction rate, and is home to so many beautiful beaches. Number 7. New Brunswick. Just a quick $48.50 toll ride across the outrageously expensive Confederation Bridge brings us to our next province, which is often the most overlooked. No Funswick. I mean New Brunswick. But while many Canadians think of New Brunswick as the absolute worst, the statistics say otherwise. Sure, there are no vibrant big cities, and the economy is lacking with the lowest minimum wage and median household income at just $86,500. But have you seen this coastline? Not to mention, the median home value is the lowest in Canada at only two hundred fifty-two grand. So even with the low salaries and high taxes, the poverty rate is still just 9.4% which is the third lowest of any province. And despite its nickname, there are actually some really cool places in No Funswick. The capital, Fredericton, has a great art scene and tons of greenery. St. John is incredibly picturesque with historic buildings and so much beautiful nearby nature, not to mention the up-and-coming uptown area. And Moncton's got the best jobs, restaurants, and nightlife of the three main cities, as well as the most francophones. Which reminds me, you should probably learn French if you plan on moving here, because because it's the only official bilingual province. Number 6. Saskatchewan Sure, Saskatchewan gets really cold, with temperatures often dropping to negative 40 Celsius. But would you rather be warm or rich? Saskatchewanians apparently pick the latter, because despite the frigid environment and boring landscape, they have the second highest life satisfaction rate of any province, and I'm guessing that has something to do with them also having the second highest median household income at $102,000, in addition to the second lowest median home value of just $288,000. Or maybe it's because even if it is cold for half the year, Saskatchewan is still the sunniest province. Speaking of which, those clear skies also make it one of the best places to see the northern lights. But while Regina and Saskatoon are both great small cities with growing economies and a ton to do, the rest of the province is really struggling. Prince Albert, for example, has a poverty rate nearing 25%, which has led it to being one of the most dangerous cities in Canada. And North Battleford's crime rate is 495% above the national average. This has led to Saskatchewan being the most dangerous province, with an overall crime rate 91% above the national average. But hey, at least the people are nice when they aren't trying to rob you. Number 5. Nova Scotia. The second smallest province by total area might just be the most beautiful. From stunning beaches, forests, lakes, and rivers, to charming villages like Lunenburg, Wolfville, Chedicamp, and Bedeck, to the freaking Cabot Trail in Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia does not waste 
any space. Basically, if you want to live a quiet life among beautiful scenery, look no further. And if you want to live a less quiet life among beautiful scenery, well, also look no further, because Halifax is one of the best cities in Canada with a diverse and booming economy. And since the market's still undersaturated in most industries, it's also a great place to start a business. Sure, wages still have some catching up to do, as Nova Scotia's median household income is just $90,000. But as the population continues to grow, so should the salaries, and the cost of living still isn't too expensive with a median home value of just 351 grand, which is more than worth it, especially when you consider there's literally no crime and the schools are among the best in the nation. And unlike some Canadian provinces, <coughs> the fun one, Saskatchewan and Manitoba, <coughs> okay, I gotta stop coughing, people are gonna think I have COVID. Nova Scotia actually has pretty mild weather. Well, by Canadian standards, at least. Number four, British Columbia. I'm sorry, Nova Scotia, but with places like Vancouver Island, the Okanagan Valley, and Kootenay and Yoho National Parks, British Columbia is by far the most beautiful and diverse province, and it was never even close. But if you thought BC stood for British Columbia, it actually stands for bring cash, because boy, are you gonna need it with a median home value of $891,000, which is actually the highest in the nation. The economy is also incredible however, with the highest GDP growth of any province and tons of good paying jobs in literally every industry, which has resulted in the third lowest unemployment rate as well as the fourth highest median household income at 96 grand. So the stress of money can't be that bad considering British Columbia also has the second highest life expectancy at 82.4 years. And who wouldn't want to live as long as possible to savor these views? And if you're not the outdoorsy type, there's still plenty here for you because Vancouver is a gorgeous, bustling, multicultural city, and Victoria is one of the most charming places in the country. Not to mention, they're also home to the most mild climates in Canada. Number three. Ontario. Whether you want to live in a big city, small city, beach town, or even the countryside, Ontario has it all. Of course, there's Toronto, which manages to be an incredibly safe and clean city despite its massiveness. Not to mention, it's the most multicultural city in the world. But there's also so much more to Canada's most populated province. From beautiful shorelines across four Great Lakes, to the Niagara Falls region, to We Met Canyon and Thousand Islands National Park, the second largest province by total area has no shortage of beautiful scenery, quaint towns, or places to live that hashtag cottagecore life. And if you're only in it for the money, well, Ontario is the economic juggernaut of Canada, accounting for nearly 40% of the national GDP. So you shouldn't have much difficulty finding a good job, as the median household income of $100,300 is the third highest in the nation. And those jobs aren't just in Toronto. In fact, Ottawa actually has even higher salaries, is much cheaper, and while you might think it's boring, because government, it's actually a pretty hip city and a wonderful wonderful place to raise a family. Speaking of which, if you've got kids, Ontario is the second safest province and has the second best schooling system. Honestly, if it wasn't so expensive with a median home value of 835 grand, Ontario probably would have been number one. Number two, Alberta. You've likely seen images of Alberta gracing covers of magazines and travel inspo social media alike. But besides the majestic mountains and lakes of Banff and Jasper, Alberta also offers an incredibly high quality of life. Mainly thanks to the oil that abounds in the region, which has helped the province achieve by far the highest median household income at over 113 grand, as well as the fourth lowest unemployment rate at just 7%. Yet despite those high paychecks, the cost of living still isn't unreasonable with a median home value of only 426 grand. Yeah, that's less than half the cost of a house in British Columbia. Add in the fact that it's the most tax-friendly province, and it's no wonder the poverty rate is the lowest in the country at just 8.2%. It is a surprise how the public schools are also the best in Canada despite those low taxes, however. But either way, there just isn't much wrong with Alberta. The only things keeping it from number one are the crime rate that's 46% above the national average and the province's heavy dependence on oil for the high incomes. Because sure, things are great now, but as oil prices are very cyclical, it's only a matter of time before the economy crashes. Now before we get to number one, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and let me know what you think the best province in Canada is. But without further ado, number one, Quebec. 
I guess it's true that bigger is better and that things do get better with time because Canada's largest and most historic province is also the best. Quebec is by far the safest province, has the second most diversified economy, second lowest unemployment rate, the highest average life expectancy, and third highest life satisfaction rate. And while the median household income of $94,000 is only the fifth highest, the cost of living is also incredibly affordable with a median home cost of just 449 dollars and very cheap rents in Montreal, resulting in the second lowest poverty rate at just 8.7%. And speaking of Montreal, the culture, the food, the history, oh la la, is it beautiful. And there are also many other charming cities and towns, in addition to gorgeous forests, mountains, lakes, and beaches. The only thing that should stop you from moving here is if you don't speak French, in which case, learn French, because Quebec is the best province to live in for 2021.